Hey everyone, Dave the NC Picker here. I'm in my garage and I got a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot of work. Well, a slightly overwhelming amount of work. I haven't been out here for quite a few days. Is this all set up right? Yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, I was just testing a battery. So I'm gonna list some, like always, we're gonna list some. We've got a lot of orders to pull. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about. So hopefully we can do this all. I, I might just plan on making this two videos because I just, I feel like in my bones, that's gonna be a really long episode if I try to do this in one because all the orders, uh, you know, a lot of people split them up anyways. I, I might split this up. Maybe I'll just ship half the orders now and then we'll do it again. Hey, that'll actually help me get more listings too. If I do five listings this video, five listings the next video, then I get more listed. But anyways, if you're new here, I sell on eBay. Uh, right now I'm gonna pull up my orders and start pulling them. My computer was restarted because of a problem. That's not good. Hmm, I wonder what happened. It's weird. Got a cat hanging on it. <laughs> oh, you know what? We had an internet outage. That could have something to do with this too. They're doing like fiber installs in my neighborhood and they cut our internet and we had to get AT&T out to fix it and all that fun stuff. Luckily all this happened while I was yard sailing. So I really didn't have to feel the, the pain of it. But yeah, so I feel like I have 3 million things to talk about. Um, first, let's find something to list. Uh, you know, part of my episodes based on your guys' feedback is I'm gonna do some listing at the beginning of the episodes or try to do some listing uh, when I'm doing you know, my episodes each time, just list a couple things. And I think that will be good. So here's a scratchy head, let's list this. Although this might be Anna's, I'll put her name on it because I think it is hers. And uh, if it sells, she'll get the money. But my sales have picked up significantly and I, I have to at some point blame the fact that I've been listing more because obviously that's good. Obviously listing is going to generate more sales. So this is a scratchy, like itchy and scratchy plush hat. So look, I'll show you, it'll look really cool. You wear it like this, see, pretty cool. It's from Universal Studios. Ooh, that made my hair all staticky. But yeah, I think we bought it on Whatnot like a year and a half ago and Anna Anna got it. Is that itchy or scratchy? Which one is it? I think that's eh, scratchy, I don't know. No, that's the cat. Yeah, I actually don't know if that's itchy or scratchy. Is that the, is that the cat or the, I think it's a mouse and a cat. Yeah, that's the cat. They're itchy or scratchy. And let's see, is there any solds? $15.95 plus shipping, okay. So we're gonna do a sell similar on that. And we'll, again, I've got a 20% coupon, so we'll price it at $19.99. That would give people a, what, two, $4 discount, getting it back to 16, which is the last full price. You know, do a little math each time you're doing things. But I did list yesterday. I listed a decent amount, maybe like 15 items. I'm gonna put this in FL41. That's the bin I'm gonna put it in. Oh, and I ran into someone at a yard. Like I said, I have a million things to talk about. So I ran into a viewer at a yard sale. His name is Fish Boxer. And he said, hey, Dave, because <laughs> I've met him before. He actually sold me this Mighty Ducks poster that Carrie never took that I bought for Carrie. So he said, hey, Dave, you know, we're only like, you know, four minutes from my house. I'd love you to come over and see my inventory system because I think I'm doing inventory in a better way than pretty much anyone on eBay or on YouTube. And I was like, well, I guess I'm interested in that. So, you know, I decided to go over there. And obviously there's some risk in going to a viewer's house at random, but I trust Fishboxer. We've talked a lot, we've met up before. So he hasn't, he hasn't attacked me yet or punched me or anything like that. So, you know, I figured it'd be probably fine. So I went over there and he showed me his inventory system and I brought my camera and I'm gonna show it to you. I'll actually insert the footage like now and then we'll come right back and we'll continue what we're doing. All right, so I'm out here doing my normal yard sale thing. I ran into a viewer, Fish Boxer, who I've met up a few, with a few times, well, once before and then once at a yard sale. Um, and he said that we're like three minutes from his house and that he has the greatest eBay inventory system ever. And so we're gonna check it out and I'm gonna record it because, you know, for this flipper channel, you know, you're always watching me stumble through inventory. It'll be interesting to see a different inventory system and see if we, first of all, if I like it so I can implement it or if it helps some of you guys. So I figured why not? Um, I'll tell him I'm gonna record it so we can maybe get some ideas. Mom wants to see too? Oh yeah. <laughs> I got your curiosity. Yeah, we're ready. All right, let me uh, open the garage door there. Okay. Oh, that garage. Yeah, that one has actually walled off. Oh, gotcha. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it seems like a picker's garage. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't plan for you, but it's all these file cabinets, like 43 of them. Oh, wow. So, like, these are all hats, you can see. Oh, wow. Hmm. You could do it one hand. 
like while you're filming. Mm. And like, um, I bought them all used. They were like $75 a piece. Wow. But if you figure, you get, if you bought five tubs, yeah, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be that much. I kind of guess so. Stuff he's something like, cute yeah, too. Look at anything you want. So wow. it'd be 75 for the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it comes all to get, all in one piece. Oh, that's not bad. And these things, these drawers are made to hold like a ton of weight too. Oh. So you can put as much weight as you want in them. Wow. Chemistry wow. And it keeps it clean. Yeah, and I like, like how can, it's you like. You can also just like take a blower and blow it out. Just completely out of sight. Hello, yeah. how are you? <laughs> this is a guy from. He's just bringing YouTube. strangers over to your house. I was like, wait, <laughs> who's home? <laughs> this is Dave, you, the NC picker guy. Oh yeah, hey Dave. Nice to meet you. He was showing me how he stores his inventory. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a whole process. It is yeah. We got, we got our death pile too, as you process. can see with the golf clubs over there. Is that your death pile or no, anything? No, that's only part of it. Yeah. Oh man. Is that what you buy a lot of, is golf clubs? Yeah. I just don't list a lot of them. <laughs> Look at all that. Uh... Yeah, that. That I got on like local. Wow. Because so, you can walk, walk down there and see the shipping yeah. stuff. You can look up and see all the boxes. Oh wow, yeah. They're kind of handy. Yeah, it's pretty organized. This stuff here right is here. really neat. You can get it at Lowe's. You can see how I cut on it for two years and you can't even tell. Like with a razor. It's like right. a Luan or something. I don't know. What is it's that? It's plastic. Or, or like some kind of plastic. But like some wow. smaller stuff you can put in there. This is where I put a lot of the small stuff in these things. Oh, these these cool. three are yeah. all, all shoes. Look how many shoes you can get in there. Wow. I mean, but you can only open one door. Jeez. But you have to, I, all my shoes, I put them in here, in here with a... A silica like, gel? Yeah. Ah. And we did have a little mold one time. Gotcha. All the other stuff. But all the little stuff are in these things. No, it's a good setup. Wow. And all this stuff up here, you can stack, you can put anything heavy on these things too. Yeah. But these drawers are made to hold heavy stuff, so you can load them up with tools or whatever. Interesting, yeah. It's, uh, it'd be nice rather than pulling down those yeah, cardboard boxes. I, had, I went through the tub thing. I had a shed yeah. out there when I started, you know, I needed to get bigger yeah. and bigger. So I took everything out of this garage, put it out in the shed, and brought the eBay stuff in here. But yeah, pulling the tub, open the lid, put it yeah. back. Especially when you're looking for something you can't find. Uh -huh. Like I can look through all these in no time. Yeah, that's true. Because you can just, yeah, I, mean, it's I great. like it. And then I put these like these things on here. <clears throat> yeah. Like, these, these things like here, this shows, these are just magnets. This shows there's room in that one. To put more stuff the happy face yeah ah okay and then we some of them we huh. use like we write on cool. like this one mugs all mugs so you don't have to oh and that one lifts up so you don't break stuff that's something you, you customize actually, or that's like just no, that's they all come. And you can pull it out if you want to oh interesting because like if you had five they're five counts so if you had files in here nobody could see yeah them. oh that is nice and look how much and the big stuff you just stick up here yeah and you can put as heavy things as you want you can't like <laughs> you want to leave at least this much room yeah it's 30 inches yeah 30 inches in between yeah that's cool and then come on around here I'll show you some more. now this is where these are all listed and some of this is uh, like death pile start yeah this yeah one. yeah but you can put your death pile in there too yeah up here big heavy stuff wow now this is a big garage like, like <laughs> we just got all these skateboards down we've just been we haven't been sourcing much, so we're yeah. trying to get, but this is all death pile stuff. Yeah, just stuff that you need to list. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, Good old death pile. these, you know, as you can see, there's some little stuff in here. Oh, yeah, Pokemon. And label them. Oh, that is kind of nice, huh? Just pulling a drawer. These are a little harder to find, but. And then, Coal. These are just regular ones. You can find these regular file cabinets. Interesting. They're, they're easy to find these. And cheap. These I'm are just really thinking cheap. like <laughs> carrying a camera through them that might be a little oh, tight. You think, There's a good find. Yeah, I, yeah. I left at least 30 inches yeah. just so you could walk with a tub or whatever. Red like here, steel. some camera. This is like stuff that I... Advanced you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Now I'm just looking at your inventory stuff, now. I've got a bunch of this stuff one time, <clears throat> but the guy was a smoker and it just like stinks. Mm. It has like this coating on it. Yeah. I ended up just selling local. Yeah. Yeah, look at the NES. I'm filming. Oh yeah. In the box back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's one. You haven't seen one of these lately, have you? No. <laughs> I don't know if I should have bought that or not. Let me show you one more thing back there. You go in that room there to the left. Now this is kinda like my workshop, but it's getting overtaken by eBay like Oh look at Garfield. Yeah. But here's where I do the, the my filming with the same stuff. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of these. Photography and all that stuff goes right there. This is where I watch Dave. Nice. <laughs> you got like a Chromecast hooked up to it? Yeah, right? I'm working on that. I just okay. got the T. Uh, I got the Chromecast. I haven't even hooked up yet. Wow. <laughs> 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 I put him in a bag. A you know why I put him in a bag? Why? So I can sell him in a couple of years when I get more valuable. Yeah. <laughs> I want it to be in mint condition. I'm going to send that to Kevin right now. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> he didn't take me in the backyard. Yeah, so she was a crossing guard. <laughs> she was. <laughs> she was a crossing was guard. Yeah. yeah. We have something in common. That's what we do. <laughs> You know about uh, jerks in traffic, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And well, they... you know, I could write a book. I could write a book of the well, stuff we saw. Well, mm -hmm. you know, where we lived, it was like it nothing. wasn't that yeah, bad. Was, yeah. yeah. All right. All right cool. Man. We're you gonna try to hit that one yeah. estate yeah. sale in yeah. St. Augustine. Yeah. All right. So, what did you think? Do you think that is the best way to store items and to do your eBay store? I actually really like the filing cabinets. The only problem I have with the filing cabinets, if I'm honest, is I think they're kind of ugly. No offense, fish boxer. I think you know that filing cabinets aren't beautiful, but I just don't think like they look that good and it feels really tight, like everything's surrounding you. But the actual storage, keeping items safe, getting in and out of them is amazing. I really like that. So it is tempting to consider it. I like this just because there's more of an open feel, but I do think it would be much easier to pull orders doing what he does. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Definitely a huge value to that. Maybe if you got those and like, you could like paint them or something and brighten them up, make them look a little less office-y. I don't know, they give me such an office vibe that it kind of bothers me. I don't like working in an office, so. All right, I'm looking up another item here. It's this Brian Griffin from Family Guy in a tuxedo. 2005 plush from, what does it say? 20th Century Fox. I don't actually see any souls. Oh, here, here's one right here. $9 plus ship right there. So we'll list that. Why am I listing only plush? I don't know. It's what I went over there and grabbed. I actually have a hat and some more plush here that I'm going to list during this episode. That was cool meeting up with Fish Boxer. We actually met at like the weirdest yard sale I've ever been to. This is, this is really weird. And I'm not even sure if I'll put the footage in a picker video because I didn't buy anything. So I went to this yard sale and I didn't buy anything, but they it didn't start till 11 11 a.m and we rolled in like 11 15 11 20 a little bit after it started and there was nothing priced like the garage was open there was people walking around but there was no pricing and everything just seemed to be as it was right like it hadn't been put anywhere specific not on tables nothing like that it was just like walking into someone's garage completely as normal like they weren't having a sale at all and you walk around you're like oh okay how much is this oh that's not for sale right? A lot of that. And you go to another item. Oh, that's not for sale. We're not selling that. We're not selling that. I listed him for 11 bucks plus shipping because with my coupon, that'll bring him down to around nine, which is what the comp is. So, <laughs> and I'm asking him like, okay, can I, can I buy this? Someone else asked, oh, is this bike for sale? They're like, no, that's not for sale. I'm like, is it outside only? Like, no, it's inside too. You go inside and it's just their house, right? Their house just set up like a normal house, not like prepped for a sale at all. It's just literally their house and just their stuff in it. And I'm like, oh, is this for sale? She's like, no, that's not for sale. We're keeping that. Are these shoes for sale? No, those are our shoes. We're not selling those. Is this for sale? No, that's not for sale. Like, it's, it's really interesting because basically like their method of a yard sale was just say, we're just gonna open our doors, let people come in. And if they wanna buy something, they can ask and we'll tell them no if we're not selling it. And I, my mom's like, is there anything for sale up the stairs? Like, yeah, there's stuff for sale upstairs too. I'm trying to look this up. There's a little Aflac ducky. Aflac. Um, looks like it sells for five bucks. So I'll list that really quick. Oh my gosh, he's yelling at me. So I'll list the Aflac duck as well. So my mom goes upstairs. I didn't go upstairs because at that point, Fish Boxer had come in and I was talking to him while, uh, while my mom was still looking. And she comes back down and she's like, well, that was kind of uncomfortable. I was like, why? She's like, well, it's like a teenage boy up there playing video games, just like <laughs> doing his thing, not even really aware there's a yard sale or why my mom is up there. It was, it was the weirdest sale. Anyways, we didn't buy anything because it was super uncomfortable, but that is where I met Fish Boxer and decided to go over to his house. So anyways, that's that story wrapped. Look at that. We already finished a whole thing that I did this weekend. All right, this Aflac duck is worth like nothing. I'm going to list it anyways because I already took pictures. Let's put it in FL91. It says the trending price is 960. Weird. But there's one that sold for five, one for 986 and calculated shipping one for nine. And cal Maybe I'll list it for nine because I've got... There's one that sold at auction for five. That's the difference. One that sold at auction for five is bringing down the total value. So I'll do nine bucks, I guess. 
we'll see if it sells. Like I said, 20% off, it'll be like eight or seven bucks when all is said and done, 750, plus first class shipping. And what did I say I was putting in it? FL91. But yeah, so that's good. That's uh, what, three listings? Yeah, three, I think. And so yeah, last night I was listing like a beast, right? Basically we had gone to all these yard sales and it was tough. It was, gosh, there's a whole thing about that too. The goal was to go sourcing yesterday. And my additional like alternative goal was to try to list everything I sourced. I failed at that goal, but I did list a lot of what I sourced. So I felt pretty good about it. I mean, I think maybe me and Tina listed a total of like 20, 25 items. We hadn't sourced a ton of things, but we did source, you know, a decent amount. And it was good to like look it up and see what I did, how I did right after. I think that's always good. It helps you learn. Okay, apparently this is sword art online. It really could use a bath. It's definitely seen better days. I don't know. Should I wash it first? Uh, I might have to on this one. I want to put it in the wash. Hold on. I'll put it. It's just a little too dirty for my liking. If it was only worth like five bucks, I probably wouldn't, but it's worth like 20. So I might as well clean it up and we'll list it in the next video or something. Or in a couple. I think this is my dad's. I don't think, is this my dad's? There's a tag on it. Maybe not. This is a Disney World hat. Little Mickey on it. Strap on the back. Walt Disney World, which if you watched Kevin's video, it's now illegal to sell, uh, or against Disney's policy to sell secondhand items, which, well, to resell their items. And it's not really, that's a bit like, uh, a bit clickbaity, but I do clickbait all the time, so I'm not judging Kevin for it. But basically, they don't want you to resell their stuff, and if you do, you might lose your season pass, and the Japan parks are being a little harder on it. Yeah, I don't see this exact hat. I'm trying to find a comp. This is the closest and it sold for $11.46. So maybe I'll do that one. I'll list it for like 13. But yeah, in my last video I was listing and someone, you know, I said, oh, the trending price is this. I guess I'll set it at this. And they said, Dave, don't ever go by the trending price because the trending price isn't always right and you shouldn't do that and blah, 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 blah. And I know, I know the trending price isn't always right, but there's a little little tick box next to the trending price that you can click on and it'll show you which items it's basing its trend off of, right? I'll show you it in a second. I'm sure most of you know this. But to blindly follow the trending recommended price that eBay gives you is definitely a bad idea. I do not do that. But I do look at it. So right here, is it in focus? You see the little, it says trending price is $5. Obviously that's not true. I just found a, a comp that sold for 12 bucks. Click this little graph here and it shows you what it's ba basing it on. It's basing it on this one. So basically you can take that into account, which is really weird because it's basing it on that one and that one sold for $12 plus shipping. And it says the average price is $5. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense either. So don't trust the number on trending, but it is useful sometimes to look at that little graph and see all those, all those listings that it's based on because it'll help you make a you know listing decision. Maybe, maybe not, 50-50. Definitely don't solely rely on that though to quell anyone's fears out there who thought I did that I was really concerned about the trending price. Put this in FL72. We're gonna list one more, guys, and we got a bunch of orders to pull. Don't get impatient. So I've got some more shirts. Do I dare? I don't think I can do these on a video because I really am bad at comping them. <laughs> I think you guys remember last time I tried to comp, but look at this, Metallica. Honesty is my only excuse, Damage Ink Tour. And then on the back, it says Metallica. So this is single stitch and it's a bit torn up. Look at this, like little holes and stuff. I don't know, I, let me do like Google Lens and see if I find something really fast. And if not, we'll list something else because I don't want you to have to wait for me to research for two hours. Speaking of vintage shirts, Raleigh Roots is coming on the podcast tonight. The Trash to Cash podcast. Let's see, there's a... There's a listed here for $235. Is that it? Damage. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's not sold though. Let's see if we can find a sold. $399 is another listing. $115, $141, $150. At the end of the day, I think a lot of these shirts that I got from Rally Roots, I've got to lower the price. This one seems like it does sell for 150 though, pretty consistently. So I'll probably list this for 150. The only difference is mine's in kind of bad shape, but I have my coupon. So if I did 150, it would really be 130. And I don't know the size. I guess I would have to measure it too. Where's my measuring tape? Let's see, how can I take a picture of this easily? This is so complicated. That's what I, this is what I mean. So I've got it hung up here like this. That's pretty good. Now I need to get like a measuring tape. All right, let me take the pictures first. And I'm gonna list it for 150, but my 10, 20% coupon will bring it down. I gotta take pictures of the damage too. I think with these shirts, damage isn't that big of a deal. Like people kind of expect it. I think like they think they look super cool if they got damage on their shirt, cause it's real vintage. What do the kids say? It's drip. That's, that's how they say styling or something. 
as they say, it's dripping. Well, this one's ripping because it's all ripped. Okay, I took a bunch of pictures. And then let's see, there's no tag. So I have no idea what kind of tag it's on or anything. Uh, can I measure it? Here we go. I got a measuring tape. So pit to pit. Okay, so I know every now and then, and it's, it's not common, but most of my viewers are much more well-informed on reselling than me. And I own that. I'm not here to be the professional who makes you feel like you have a ton to learn. I'm just a guy reselling and you're following along, as you know. So, but I'll tell you something. Every now and then maybe you can learn something. P2P. Is it P2P or PTP? And put in the comments. I'm not sure which one they say. That's pit to pit, like armpit to armpit measurement. And this is, so if I put it here, eh, right there to there, this is like 19 and a half, 20 inches. That's a pretty small shirt. That's like a medium, I would say. But a lot of times if you put that in your description, people will now know, okay, let me take off my shirt, measure the pit to pit, and I'll know if it's going to fit me or not before I go spend $150 on a t-shirt. So it's really useful to put the pit to pit in, an, in a high dollar vintage shirt listing. I'm gonna say 20, it's like 20 inch pit to pit. 20 inch pit to pit. And I don't know, should we say that's a medium? And then they wanna know the length. So the length, I just do from the top to bottom. I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to do the length, but it looks like 27 inches, 27 inch length, 27 inch worn. I'm going to put worn in there too. I put vintage Metallica damage ink tour t-shirt, 20 inch pit to pit, 27 inch length worn condition used size. Uh, I don't know what size that is. I know that I like to wear like a 23 inch pit to pit. So I think I'm going to put, I think it's probably a large, if you want my honest opinion, I think it's probably a large that has shrunk. Cause as you wash things, you guys know how clothes work. As you wash them, they shrink down. Even your NC picker shirts, which by the way, guys, I do have NC picker shirts left. So, you know, if you don't have one yet, you got to get your NC picker shirt. Uh, www.ncpiggy.com, www.ncflipper.com, a couple different websites you can get it, but link down below if you want to get an NC picker shirt. I'd love to sell the rest of them. I probably won't buy more. I'll probably move to like hats or something just cause like sizing and stuff on shirts is really hard to get right. All right, so we're gonna do this at 150. This says online trending price is 111, even though we've sold one, I saw one sold for 150, one sold for 140. Eh, maybe we'll do 140. That's what we'll do, we'll do 140. I'm just looking at that. I'm not trusting only the trending price. I'm just looking at that. All right, and then we're gonna put it in FL91. But yeah, so what I was saying, Raleigh Roots is actually coming on the podcast tonight. And we'll talk about this clothes stuff. And I'm sure he's going to ask me if I've sold any of them. And I'm going to have to tell him no. But my prices are probably too high. I mean, his advice was that I list high and be patient. So I'm following that advice. So there's that. All right, let's actually pull some orders. That took a really long time. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to take that long to list. But I am seeing the fruits of my labor. This listing is paying off, so I've got to keep doing it. The only problem is, as you guys know, if you've been following along, I'm going to North Carolina on Tuesday. And I'm gonna be up there pretty much all week, so I'm not gonna get to ship. Tina will do my shipping. Hopefully she'll do some listing as well. Sold Garfield with the little bunny ears to Keith. Like I said, Keith tried to buy this and I couldn't find it. Found it, relisted it, and he bought it. And it sold for $18.99 plus shipping. And Keith also bought some cassettes and some DVDs actually. First is Sticks Cornerstone, Sticks. Right here, six cornerstone on cassette. I'm like torn on cassettes. I've been leaving them behind a lot because they're just not worth that much. Sold this for five bucks plus shipping. I don't know, maybe I should keep buying them because they do sell, like people like them, but so many of them are worth like five bucks that it's really hard. And a lot of the stuff I'm finding down here is country and country doesn't do as well. All right, Keith also bought Poltergeist, which I've never actually seen, but I did, speaking of scary movies, I did watch half of Child's Play last night with Tina. We went, we went and saw Megan and it was all right, but it was like kind of a tired idea. And I was like, well, let's go watch the actual child's play. And we saw the one that was out in like 2018 with Aubrey Plaza, it wasn't very good. So we said, let's watch the real one. Poultry Guy sold five bucks plus shipping also to Keith. And I'll say this, I thought it was, the first half I watched was much better than the 2018 version. I don't know why remake a movie and make it worse. I don't understand the thought process there. Unless I'm way off and you guys think the new one was really great, but I didn't, I didn't like it. He bought Linda Ronstadt mad love on cassette for five bucks these are all uh other than garfield who sold for 18.99 the rest are five dollars this last one though is ten dollars so let's grab that as well some terminator movie sold i'm not sure which one either 
there's two of them over here. The cover will maybe tell me. I've got Terminator 3 and Terminator Rise of the Machine. Wait, oh, Terminator Genesis. Oh, and then there's Terminator 2. I think you bought the good one. <laughs> Those two stink. I mean, no offense to Terminator fans out there, but I think Terminator 2 and 1 were the good ones. Yeah, look at this. This is like a nice uh, metal case one, too. This is a cool one. Got this in a bulk buy of DVDs, and he bought this one for 10. So, but yeah, this is a steel book. Really cool. Keith left a nice note, too. He said he's been binge watching the video since he was on vacation, and they're awesome. Oh, good. I'm, I'm appreciative. Thank you. I wanted to get some treasures from your store. Keep the awesome videos coming. God bless you and your family. Your friend Keith from Minnesota. Oh, man, I bet it's really cold in Minnesota right now. I'll be glad when winter is over and garage sales and estate sales start. I forgot to say thank you for the stickers and the autograph. Yeah, no problem, Keith. But yeah, so, oh, I wanted to show you this too. Hold on, let me grab this item. It says it's an FL44, but I think it's right in this bag here. I've got all these uh, squishmallows, like the watermelon. Is this, wait, is this a watermelon or a strawberry? Oh, whatever it is. It didn't sell. Oh, close up, extreme close up on my face. Hold on, let me put my camera down. But yeah, the Rally Roots thing should be good tonight. You check out the, uh, the podcast Tuesday morning, uh, which will be tomorrow for you. And, uh, you know, you can see us talk to him about what he does. He does a ton of revenue on whatnot. Like, someone told me like $400,000 that he sold on whatnot in 2022, which blows my mind, honestly. This sold, this is my last, I think, popcorn Squishmallow, sold for $12.99 plus shipping. It was funny because uh, one of my daughter's friends at gymnastics, I guess my mom was talking to her mom and she was telling her that I sell on eBay and stuff like that and I have a lot of inventory and that I'm a slob and you know, all the true things about me that she tells people. And uh, the person was like, well, do you have any Squishmallows? I wanna get some for my daughter for Christmas. And sure enough, I might've already told you this story. Uh, she did buy one of my popcorns, those little popcorns from my eBay store and Tina hand delivered it to her. So that was pretty cool. She didn't actually put the order in on eBay, which technically it's against the rules, right? But not really because she didn't even know, she never shops on eBay. My wife just told her about it. Hitman sold on DVD. I think it's probably another $5 winner here. I bought a couple DVDs this weekend too. Yeah, five bucks. Bob bought this Lincoln Land Picker. You need to sell out, I'm going broke buying all these deals. I have a lot of $5 items. Here, that's one thing you can say for NC Picker's eBay store. If you wanna support the NC Picker on eBay, you can usually do it for five bucks plus shipping. <laughs> a lot of other people only sell like three, $400 items at <laughs> Raleigh Roots. You know, if you wanna support Raleigh Roots, you gotta spend hundreds on this shirt, which this is another cool shirt. Maybe we'll list it on the next video. This is uh, kicking butt on the wild side of your town. What band is this even? Hot Cruise. Riot Cruise. What? <laughs> Why can't I read this? Motley Crue. Got it. <laughs> Took me a minute. Hot Cruise. Oh, I owe Suzanne a refund. Tina put a note for me because I owe her a refund. Uh, she overpaid for shipping. Sorry, Suzanne, that I'm so slow on this stuff. Okay, FL70, we have something. Where is it? Right here. Uh, Charlie Brown sold plush. I listed him just during one of the videos last week. Sold for 825s to Patricia. Might've been a viewer, not sure. She didn't leave a note if it was. Yeah, I'm getting geared up for travel uh, to North Carolina. I am flying out of Daytona Beach, which is way closer to where I live. I've been flying out of Jacksonville and Orlando and it's been a huge pain in the butt. So I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, that's a funny note. Uh, we're gonna look at this next note in a minute. Really excited about not having to drive an hour, hour and a half. I can just go to Daytona, which is very close to me, to get on a flight and be good to go. So this next order, someone sent a message, said, please work on those boxes next to the stairs, which I think are these, these big boxes. This is Death Pile from North Carolina that I have not even opened from my move, right? I, I brought those down as is from North Carolina. They were all on my top shelf. We could open one and look at it if you want to. I could, maybe I will, maybe I'll grab it in a second. That's from West Virginia Redneck Picker and he said, work on those big boxes by the stairs, great content. This is all for Nightmare on Elm Street, Elm Streets, which honestly, I haven't seen these either. I probably should have kept these and watched them before I sold them, but Tina lists DVDs like the instant I get them in stock. So that's a good thing but I do sometimes sell DVDs. I'm like, oh, I should have watched that. Washed it, watched it, especially for six bucks plus shipping. Okay, I'm, I'm actually pretty curious now what would happen if we looked in one of these boxes, but it would be hard. Let's just do one, let's just do one. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, it weighs like a billion pounds. You know, Tina actually said to me the other day, cause I was, oh, it's getting hot in here. I was trying to do like six things. It was last night and I was listing an Elmo on eBay and I was like, oh, I need batteries. So 
I went to find batteries and I couldn't find batteries. So then I went and I said, oh, I bought something in the, uh, I bought something from Amazon that's here that I think has batteries in it. And so I go and I open a package and I'm like, oh, but I need a screwdriver. And I go out to the garage and I start working on something completely different. And she's like, Dave, how do you get anything done? You're working on six projects. You've got a mess in every room in the house. Like pick a thing and do it. <laughs> and I'm only saying that because I'm realizing Opening this random box that has been sitting there for 11 months, 10 months, while I'm trying to pull my orders is not a good choice, but we're gonna do it anyways, why not? Here it is, top shelf, let's see what's in here. It's probably horrible stuff that's not even worth keeping. Look at that, a holiday Barbie right on the top. <laughs> ah, death pile, gotta love death pile. What is this thing? Is this a television? Look at this, this is a Blu-ray player. A Vizio Blu-ray player in the box. I guess I might've paid 10 bucks for it or talked them down, I'm not sure. What else we got in here? Oh, a nice little John Deere tractor. That's cool. What is this? I don't know. It's all wrapped up. The mystery. We'll never know. Look at this. A heavily wrapped up copy of Punch-Out for the week. <laughs> They're just sitting in a box in my garage for a year. Uh, I'm insane. But here's a blue bag. What's in here? What's in here? Oh, look at this. R134A refrigerant for a car. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know what's there. Oh, there's a VCR down there. What else? Anything exciting? Oh, look, a Department 56, I think. Winter Silhouette. Should have listed that one for Christmas. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that's in those boxes. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of work to do. This thing is so hot, I gotta turn it off. Oh, okay, so the thing I bought on Amazon, I wanted to show you this, because it's cool. And you guys recommended it to me, because in the last video I was like trying to find batteries and I had no success. And some people in Discord did it, and some people in the comments told me to get something like this. This is called the Battery Daddy. <laughs> And basically you take it, now, to be fair, I thought it came full of batteries. I was like really excited that it was only like 20 bucks and came full of batteries. It did not come with any batteries. It's just an empty case, but I went and found all my batteries and loaded it up and I was able to quickly see, oh, I don't have any nine volts. I don't have any, I only have one C battery. Um, and then on the back, you can do like a bunch more double A's. Pretty cool. I'll put a link in the description, an affiliate link. If you want to support me, you can buy that on Amazon. I think it was like 15, 20 bucks, but it seems awesome because you can like walk it around. I don't know. I like it. It was a cool suggestion. Thank you guys for the suggestion. Oh, and it comes with this. This is a little battery tester. It's actually pretty cool. You just put a battery in there and it tells you if the battery is good or bad, which is super handy. Let's keep pulling orders. I'm, I'm really all over the place today, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have so many more orders to pull, but like I said, we're going to split it up into two videos so it won't be as bad. Is this it? Yeah. This is an ashtray out of FL104. This is Peter. Stuyvesant, I don't know what that means. A filtered, it might be like a type of cigarettes or something. Sold that for 550 plus shipping. And I got that in my recent like flea market video where I bought all those ashtrays. We also have two things in the upstairs shelf. Let's see, yeah, two. So we'll go pull those. First is a solid dark gray shirt. And these are decent orders actually, and both of them are decent money. Uh, so I wanted to talk about, oh, someone's vacuuming. Tina's up here vacuuming. Oh, Say hi, yeah. Tina. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for vacuuming, Tina. I'm just grabbing two items. What's that? Hazel somehow got in there. Hazel got in the attic? Yeah, it's open. Oh my gosh, psycho it? cat. Did she get insulation all over the floor? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, oh, she I does know. that from time to time. Okay, so this sold. This is a Tommy Bahama shirt. Oops, it's gray. I paid $3 for it at a yard sale. It's a nice size, 3XT. Big sizes like that do well and they sell for decent money. And then I sold this old vintage toy, which I'll have to look at the description and the price. I can't remember what I sold it for. Okay, so this is a pre-war Japan circus clown on horse celluloid, wind that's the word I was looking for, celluloid wind up toy. Sold that for $59.99. Sold this Tommy Bahama shirt for 25. So that's not bad, not bad at all. I hope I can remember, but in the next video, I wanna talk a little bit about vintage and my ability or inability to find it. But first, we got to pull three DVDs that were really, really cheap. I'm not even sure how they, I guess I know how they sold for this cheap. Uh, this is almost like not even worth it to sell them for this cheap, but whatever. At least it decreases my inventory level and it keeps my store alive. Yeah, I'll say that. Like I said, doing all this listing at the beginning of videos, Tina doing listing, the store is like alive again and it's fantastic. It's what I like to see. You know, I did, I did look at my numbers from last year. My numbers in 2022 we're lower, we could even look at them. And uh, I'm not surprised. I moved, I've got a ton on my plate. It does not surprise me that my sales numbers went down. 
I also don't feel like I'm finding as high of quality, as high of quality, as high quality of items in Florida that I was finding in North Carolina. I think maybe there's just a little more money in the area I used to live in in North Carolina. I'm not sure, but there just was better quality, higher dollar items than there is down in Florida. But maybe not. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just missing all the good stuff. It's just different stuff. So here's what's sold. ET the Extraterrestrial, pre-owned, $3.74. <laughs> the Alamo, pre-owned, $3.74. And Young Guns, new DVD. Is this like a TV show? Special edition, sold for $5.24. Three items for, I don't know, 10 bucks, whatever, fine. Thank you for the order. Oh, hey, and it's from Trayton. Trayton said, hey, Dave, love the content, both on Picker and Flipper channels. Good luck on your weight loss adventure as well. I believe in you, best wishes. How oh, thank you. And speaking of that, today was weigh-in for the weight loss, and I can provide you with an update. We do weigh-in every Sunday. And my update is such, and if you were keeping track, last time we talked, my weigh-in last week was 194 pounds and four ounces. And today, one week later, we're at 190 pounds and hmm, was it six ounces, eight ounces, whatever. It was about four pounds of weight loss in a week, which is what I lost in the first week. It'd be cool if I lost four pounds a week, but that's not a healthy rate. I think it's just because it's the beginning and at the beginning you lose a little faster. I imagine it'll slow down here, especially with me traveling up to North Carolina. So I sold this. This is Deadpool Lazy River Edition with like a little tube. And this sold for $19 plus shipping, so that's a decent one. But yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be hard to do like the healthy eating while I'm traveling, but I think I'm starting to get into a groove of like a lot of foods I like that are healthier. And uh, I think that's the key. You gotta find foods that you don't mind eating and that you could continue eating long-term. And that I, I seem to be finding that, which is really good. And I think that could help me do this for a lot longer and eat better for forever maybe. And I'm feeling better, so that's good too. And it's actually helped with my anxiety a little bit. Maybe it's because I'm a little less stressed about keeling over because I'm actually paying attention to what goes in my body. I don't know. This isn't a uh, weight loss show, but we're gonna stop there. We've got more orders. We will be back probably in two days. Uh, and I'm gonna really, it still be the same day for me, but it'll be a new day for you. So while you're waiting, go check out the last video, the last couple videos. Make sure you catch up on all my old videos, binge watch them if you want. They hold up like Keith said. and. I will do the other half of this episode after I take a five minute break to gather some air and we'll see you on the flippity flop.